Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WIPB and Indiana Public Radio at Ball State University. Today we are chatting with Heather Williams, Program Coordinator of Ball State University's Building Better Neighborhoods Initiative. Heather has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I thank you, Heather, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So building better neighborhoods, how does one build a better neighborhood in Muncie? What we do um, with Building Better Neighborhoods is we act as support for the neighborhoods in the city of Muncie. And a lot of times that looks, um, it looks different for every neighborhood. So uh, in essence, what I do is I try to match the needs of the city's neighborhoods with the resources of Ball State University, depending on the needs of each neighborhood, which vary. And, and those needs are uh, quite different. You are actually trying to help build better neighborhoods where there is a need for more infrastructure, there's a need for more support. In a sense, it is uh, Muncie's approach and it's Ball State's uh, uh, approach to uh, trying to help where help is needed as opposed to simply uh, spreading out uh, services across neighborhoods without reference to, to particular needs. Yeah, absolutely. We are here um, to respond to the needs of the neighborhood. So it's not me going into a neighborhood and saying, you know, I have all the answers. You know, this is what a great neighborhood looks like. No, it's, it's going in and having conversations with people, um, you know, on the street level. You know, what are the issues that you're experiencing in your neighborhood? Is it crime? Is it safety? Um, are you experiencing drainage issues? Um, are your residents um, maybe not eating as healthy as they could be because they live in a food desert? You know, how can we address those things? And some ways that we do that is simply by connecting residents back to the resources at the city level, even. Um, I have experience working for the city of Muncie and you just kind of knowing how um, the city services work and connecting people to the street department if it's uh, a light that's out or a sign that's missing or tweeting at, um, at Muncie potholes uh, if they have pothole issues. Just you know, knowing those things can sometimes move a neighborhood down that continuum of care um, to improve. So let's talk about the types of needs. You, you listed so many of them, but let's categorize those. You have infrastructure needs having to do with potholes, lights, signage, the kinds of things that any neighborhood would require and, and would require of a municipality. Um, then you have the social needs, the social yes. services needs um, that are going to be different depending on which mm -hmm. neighborhood you're talking about. What other categories of needs are we talking here? So you really, um, you really hit on uh, kind of a main point of neighborhood building is that you have, you know, basic infrastructure needs. You just have you know, the basic hierarchy of needs where you're looking at, are we safe, are we clean, um, are our streets cared for? And then you move up that next level and it's, you know, do you know your neighbors? Um, there's a national campaign that's, that's simply called the WAVE campaign. And it's really just reminding people that you, know, you, you just need to wave. Say hello. Yeah, you just say need to hello say in hello. The Absolutely. So um, you, you start at the, at the bottom level, you move up to where you're really trying to engage people. You're, in try, you're trying to engage residents um, just to get to know each other. And that in, in itself sometimes takes care of those bottom level needs. You know, if, you're, um, if you know your neighbors, <clears throat> excuse me, and you're able to work together to have a, a, a voice, you know, a, a group voice, you can say, hey, we're, we're sick and tired of this crime on our streets. We together are going to create a neighborhood watch and we're gonna look out for each other. But you can't really get to that level until you know, you know your neighbors and you're, you're binding together on that social level. And this is the essence of community organizing. It's basically coming together to solve problems that we all have in, in common. Absolutely. Um, in terms of, of the municipality, um, there are sections of this country that grew up over hundreds of years to become industrial centers. And of course, the American economy is shifting so that a lot of the production uh, areas of the, uh, the industrial production areas of the country have suffered uh, economic downturns and contractions. And Muncie is no exception there. So talk about how that actually informs how you approach different neighborhoods and their different needs as people move away, as, mm -hmm. as neighborhoods that perhaps were once um, uh, middle class are, are, are seeing some, some difficulties. How do you adjust your services to meet the particular needs mm -hmm. of different neighborhoods in that respect? 
Well, we have a, actually a really exciting initiative that's happening on Muncie's uh, southwest side. It's called the 812 Coalition, and I'm a member of the Steering Committee and the Housing Committee. And it's in a neighborhood that is exactly that. You know, we had a factory um, that is now 66 acres of concrete. So it was torn down, those jobs are no longer there. So you have residents that um, still live in the neighborhood that used to work there. And then they're, you know, they've raised families who had an expectation that, well, dad worked there, grandpa worked there, uh, mom worked there, I'm gonna work there, and now that's gone. So you have, um, you know, for the first time, Families that you know, were able to care for themselves, care for their home, care for their neighborhood, they're not able to do that any longer. They haven't really adapted. There's also a transgenerational knowledge transfer of skills that are now no longer required. And that's, that's also a very important point. When my father has certain skill sets and his father has had certain uh, skill sets and, and my mother and, and my grandmother have had certain so mm -hmm. skill sets, those skill sets, those attitudes, those that work ethic has mm -hmm. come down to me and now I have no outlet for it. Absolutely, yes, we have, we have a generation of residents in those particular areas of town that are experiencing just that. So looking for ways, you know, to tap into that energy. Um, and that expertise, yes, that knowledge. Yes, absolutely, and getting them back out onto the streets and back engaged in something, even if it really is as simple as a neighborhood cleanup. You know, we want, um, through Building Better Neighborhoods, through the 812 Coalition, to really build residents up. You know, it's, it's not us to tell people how to live and, and how to engage. It's us to just, you know, kind of hold their hand and take them along um, the path so that we can help them in whatever we, way we can to redevelop their neighborhood. Not only is Muncie helping itself, but the state of Indiana and um, uh, Indiana nonprofits, foundations, and so on, are also investing in these solutions. Talk a little bit about how your, how your interactions with such organizations, including uh, Ball State, mm -hmm. actually uh, are part of the constellation of solutions that you're developing. Well, Muncie is actually very fortunate in that it has a number of very strong um, stakeholders in the community. You know, we have Ball State University, we have Ball Memorial Hospital, and each of these have you know, really been using their strengths to benefit the community. You know, Ball Memorial Hospital has taken on the Healthy Community Alliance. So they're looking at um, how they can improve nutrition, um, uh, access to food, and to help people um, quit smoking. So they're using their strengths in that avenue. Ball State's using its strengths um, generally through immersive learning to impact the community. So I am able um, to work with uh, faculty and staff throughout the university to help meet the needs of the neighborhoods. So, um, for instance, there's a, an urban planning professor working this semester with a group of residents to develop a rental advocacy program for the city of Muncie. So really training residents on how to be advocates for their neighbors. Um, if they're experiencing an issue with housing, you know, if they have a bad landlord, if there are issues with their home, how can these rental advocates help those tenants get into a better situation or work with their landlord so that they, they can um, you know, fix whatever's wrong with their house? So you know, it's those it's those projects that are really impacting the community, um, and what we're trying to do through Ball State's immersive learning is to develop long-term relationships. So it's not just an in and out. And the faculty here, um, they really get it. Uh, community building, community development, community engagement. It's something that they understand is important, and it's a focus of their study and of the work that they do with their students. So you know, we really we really touch every. Uh, college in the university. Um, we have faculty that are out in the community doing work. In terms of, of the workflow to assure that, that what you are doing is community driven and not a top down, mm -hmm. um, almost paternalistic kind of an approach, talk about how you start off with a community. Honestly, it, um, it depends on the project. Every project is different. Um, we have um, you know, immersive learning classes that deal specifically in this, in that they're doing planning, but it's very much at the neighborhood level. So they will, the students will go in and they'll help create neighborhood plans with the residents. So that is a series of meetings where the, the students have 
you know, a method that they follow, but it's based off of uh, community need. So you're, you're sitting in a room with 30 residents and you're asking them, you know, what do you love about your neighborhood? What are some challenges you experience? And they're, you know, they're cataloging all of this data and then the students go back and they look at best practices and because it, you know, that's what their strength is. They can do the research. Why don't you cite an actual situation where there was a plan and then talk about how you took that plan and converted it into action? Sure. Um, sometimes, you know, the things in the plan that are that are identified are are really simple. They're just, you know, yes, there are 15 people at this meeting, but there could be 40. You know, how do we engage our residents? Um, and a lot of the neighborhoods, you know, right now, that's kind of the point where they're at. Um, and so we are, you know, working with them to develop activities and and ways to engage. So, you know, how do you shut down a street so that you can have a picnic or a party in the street? Because, you know. Block parties used to be a thing, and you know we're trying to bring that back in the city of Muncie. Um, how do you access funding so that you can purchase food for a picnic? You know, it's really those, um, they may seem like minor things that, that would uh, be stumbling blocks um, in the way for a neighborhood to, to, to have an activity or an event, um, but everyone who works in, in, in a neighborhood is a volunteer, so um, you know, they don't have the answers. In terms of uh, the budget and how you actually function, how mm -hmm. do you fund your, your activities? And I know you have a lot of volunteers. Well, actually, I, um, the program began in 2014 through a grant from the Ball Brothers Foundation. Um, the Ball Brothers you know, was meeting at high levels um, with the city of Muncie, with Ball State University, with Ball Memorial Hospital, um, looking at ways that they could get the resource, resources of the university out into the neighborhoods. Um, you know, because for years and years, um, there was a sense of uh, town-gown divide. And you know, I went to Ball State um, you know, back in the, in the early 2000s, and students didn't really get off campus. You know, there was that, that division. Um, so the Ball Brothers gave the money to Ball State to create the program, and through that, I was hired. Um, Ball State University, since that time, um, has realized that there's um, a lot of power in, um, in building uh, capacity at the neighborhood level, so they have um, kept me on um, as a full-time employee. So they've really um, accepted that commitment, you know, their commitment to helping to improve the city by continuing the Building Better Neighborhoods program. Well, to be seen as a treasure, by the municipality, you have to demonstrate respect for the municipality citizens. And that's part of what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. You're demonstrating respect, you're, you're sharing your resource, you're sharing your energy, and you're listening. Yes, that is what I do, I listen. Heather, thank you so much for building the better neighborhoods that we have here in Muncie, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, thank you for having me.